Small Shop. This is Blaze the Movie Fan and it's time for another spoiler movie review. This time I will be discussing Gone with the Wind in full detail. Now I started the production of this review on February 14th, 2017. And let me assure you, it's purely a coincidence that I started production on a movie that's a romance movie during Valentine's Day. But anyway, I have wanted to do a spoiler movie review of Gone with the Wind in fucking years, and I'm glad that I finally got around to it. Gone with the Wind is my favorite romance movie of all time. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive in. The movie starts with a still image and music going on for a couple of minutes. Yeah, as much as I love this movie, there's this one big problem I have with this movie. Having the movie start like that is fucking pointless and it adds nothing to the movie. In fact, if that wasn't there, it wouldn't change the movie at all. And to make matters worse, this bullshit happens three fucking times in the movie and I'm not joking. Once during the beginning of the movie, once during the middle of it, and once near the end. And it's as annoying all three times. With that being said though, this is the only major problem that I have with this movie. Now I'm gonna tell you what I think of the text in this movie. There is quite a lot of text when there is no speech. And I gotta say I find that to be very interesting because the text gives a lot of very useful fucking information. And that's beyond fucking awesome. And then we are introduced to the protagonist of the movie Scarlet. As of what I think about her, well I think she is very fucking beautiful. And I am not just talking about her looks. I also think that she is very fucking beautiful personality wise. She's a great protagonist for sure worth caring about. Then we are introduced to the servant mommy and I'm gonna tell you my opinion on that servant. Now she fucking cares about Scarlett a lot. Now she does act very harsh throughout most of the movie but she has a damn good reason to because she really cares a lot about Scarlett that only wants to do the best thing for her. And I gotta say that is a personality trait that I find very fucking awesome. And then we are introduced to the character Rat Butler who has a bad reputation but he is a very important character for the movie. Oh and by the way he is the second most important character of the movie behind Ordinary Scarlet. So I'm not going into detail on what I think about him now. Instead I'm going to tell you what I think about him as I am talking about the scenes that focus on him. While meeting off with other men, Rat Butler says some controversial ideas that the rest of the men there don't agree with at all. But you know what, he brings up very legitimate and good points and I can respect him for that. Yeah, I can clearly see that Rat Butler is very fucking smart and that's what I like about him. Anyway, Scarlett has a conversation with Ashley which I'm not gonna talk about since I don't care much about Ashley but I do care about Rat Butler though so instead I am gonna talk about this scene that follows that conversation. Rat Butler notices the conversation and brings up a very good point and that good point is that Scarlett isn't really in love with Ashley. And you know what? He's absolutely fucking right.
In fact, Scarlet hasn't found her true love yet. She will later on in the movie, and we will cross that bridge when we come to it, but as of right now, she hasn't found her true love. Mainly because Ashley is already in love with somebody fucking else. Anyway, Scarlett marries some dork, and I'm not gonna look up his name, because honestly, I don't fucking care about his name. But why is he marrying that dork again? I don't buy for a second that she is in love with him. Because there is nothing in the movie that even remotely hints at that. There's only one person that she is in love with. And they will be talking about that when we get to that scene. Another thing that I must point out is the fact that Scarlett fucking cries a lot in the movie. In fact, she cries throughout most of it. And to be honest, I do feel bad for her. I really do. Because she has legitimate reasons to cry. And of course, I only want the best to happen to that poor woman. She doesn't deserve to be sad all the time. But again, the fact that she cries a lot is understandable. Later on, Rat Butler gives Scarlett a hat, or whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that thing he's giving her is, but that's not important. What is important is the fact that Rat Butler gave Scarlett a present. And you know what? That really shows how much he fucking cares about her. But he isn't exactly giving this for free. He says that she has to do something for him in return. What exactly is it? I don't know. Anyway, a war begins and it's fucking terrifying. A lot of great people died during that war and it is fucking awful. And then there is a scene where some guy is trying to get a chicken with an axe and goes after that chicken. And I gotta say, I do find that scene to be pretty fucking exciting and funny. Because of this terrible fucking war, a lot of people get seriously injured. And here's the part that I find very fucking scary. And that's the fact that if someone has a very injured leg, instead of getting that leg repaired, they have to have their legs chopped the fuck off. That is very scary, man. And I honestly feel sorry for those people. But anyway, yeah, this is a terrible fucking war. And it changes the events of the movie for the worse. Anyway, Scarlett doesn't like being in that fucking war zone, so Rat Butler agrees on giving her a ride back home. And I am not saying drive because cars didn't exist back when this movie took place in. Anyway, while Garnet is on his way back to that mansion, which is very fucking far from the war zone, he has to deal with fire. And how he manages to control his horse to get past the fire is fucking genius. He uses a fucking blindfold. So the horse doesn't have to see the fire while he is running across the fire. That's so fucking awesome. This is one of the many reasons why Rat Butler is such a fucking awesome character. Unfortunately, Rat Butler has to leave Scarlet since he is part of a war. So he gives her his fucking gun. And I gotta say, the fact that he's giving her his fucking gun is beyond fucking awesome. And trust me, folks, this gun will become important later on in the movie. Remember earlier on the review when I said that Rat Butler was going to bring Scarlet home? Well, as it turns out, I remember that wrong. 
He never actually brought her the entire fucking way home. In fact, for the most part, she has to get back home on her own. And it's also hard because she has to deal with fucking rain and shit like that. Yeah, I understand exactly why she wants to go home. I would want that too. If I was in her situation. But anyway, when Scarlett gets back home to her mansion, something fucking horrible has happened. It's now in fucking ruins. So it looks like that not even her fucking home was saved from the war going on. And you know what that's so fucking sad? I am crying because all of that mess that happened because of the fucking war is so fucking sad. It really is. Oh man, I hope things will get better for her. But at this point, it seems like things are only gonna get worse before they get any fucking better. Anyway, some random cunt comes over to Scarlett's house and is up to something no good. So Scarlett shoots him. And I'm glad she did it too, because that cunt deserved it. And I'm not the only one who thinks that everyone else in the family are fucking happy that she shot that cunt. Anyway, after the war is over, Scarlett has to unfortunately pay a lot of fucking money in order to be able to live in that mansion. But she can't afford it, so she asks Red Butler for help. And he isn't willing to do that for her. Unfortunately, at least not right away. He's only willing to do that if she does a favor to him back. Thankfully, Scarlett does find a way to pay the money she is supposed to pay. And as a result, she gets to keep the fucking mansion, and that's beyond fucking awesome. Something very fucking awesome happens. Red Butler actually marries Scarlett. Oh, and by the way, her former husband is dead, so she didn't have to file a divorce or anything like that. I personally think that those two people are the perfect fucking couple, and Rat Butler really cares about Scarlett a lot. Anyway, when Scarlett is riding her cart, some asshole comes out of nowhere and starts attacking her. But since she's a smart lady, she fights back, of course. And that's beyond fucking awesome. Anyway, the house servant mommy doesn't like Rat Butler at all. In fact, she really fucking hates him, and to be fair, she has a legitimately good reason for not liking the guy. With that being said though, she is still fucking wrong though. And now I'm gonna talk about the scene where Ashley gets drunk. What the fuck? He is arrested for being drunk? Since when has that been illegal? Well, by the end of the scene, it's explained that's not really the reason he's arrested, but he's arrested for something else. It's still fucking crazy to think that he could get arrested for being drunk. And Rat Butler brings up a legitimate point when he says that he and the guy arresting him has been drunker. For those of you wondering, the reason why I'm not talking about most of the scenes focusing on Ashley is because I honestly don't care much about the guy. In fact, I find that character to be pretty bland. With that being said, it is one of the few things about the movie that I dislike. I still think it's a fucking awesome movie overall.
Now, of course, I'm not going to tell you what to think of Scarlett Stewart or Bonnie. She is a very beautiful little girl. And I really like her a lot. And I can see that Scarlett and Drat Butler really care about her a lot. Yes, yeah, she's a great daughter, that's for sure. Later on in the movie, Rat Butler tells Scarlett that he wants to divorce her. You know, I find that very fucking sad because I think that those two are the perfect couple. But there is one thing that he says though that really pisses me off. And that's when he says that Scarlett is not fit to be a mother and that's why he will take the kid away. That's fucking bullshit. Why the hell wouldn't she be a good mother? She would be a great mother. I can see that. So anyway, overall it's said that he is divorcing her but that's part of relationship that you have to deal with unfortunately. And then comes hands down the saddest part of the movie. And that's saying a lot because there are a lot of fucking depressing moments of this movie. And that's when Bonnie dies. I mean seriously, she isn't even an adult yet. Hell, she isn't even a teenager yet. She is just a fucking kid. Seeing a person so fucking young die is beyond fucking horrible and depressing. May that great girl rest in peace. Red. 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 you go. What shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And here comes the most famous scene in the movie. The reason why that scene is so famous is because the quote is fucking awesome. Another thing to note about this scene is the fact that Rat Butler said the word damn. Why is it so notable? Well, because in the 1930s the R rating didn't exist. You couldn't say fuck or can't at all in movies back then. If these words were found, they were cut out of the movie completely. And the thing is, it's not those too strong curse words that you weren't allowed to use in movies at all back then. You weren't allowed to swear in movies back then, period. With a few exceptions. There are some movies from the 1930s that used the word them, but these movies are extremely fucking few. And Gone with the Wind is one of those movies, and the word is only used once. Now, of course, today using the word them in movies is nothing special. In fact, you can even hear that word in PG rated movies. But back then, it was something special. Now with that usual trivia out of the way, I am going to tell you what I personally think of that scene in the context of the movie. It's both very sad and also pisses me off. The reason why it's sad is because Scarlett is losing a man who she loves a lot. But what totally pisses me off about that scene is the fact that Red Butler is being a total fucking dick in this scene. What do I mean? Well, Scarlett has done absolutely nothing wrong in the relationship. She's a very good woman and deserves a good man like Red Butler. But he still constantly talks about divorcing her and by the end of the movie he finally goes through it. What a dick. He should fucking know that those two are meant for each other. But nope, he doesn't. Come to think of it, maybe Tammy had a point once he had issues with that guy. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. This is my favorite romance movie of all time. It's a fucking classic and for that I'm going to give this movie the rating 2 thumbs up. 
Well guys, that's all across. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.